You're listening to CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. To learn more about who we are, what we do, and how we do it, call toll-free 1-866-928-3310, and we'll send you out a no-obligation information kit absolutely free. 866-928-3310. The CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast is now on Stitcher. Listen to us on your iPhone, Android phones, BlackBerry, and WebOS phones. Stitcher is smart radio for your phone. Find it in your app store or at Stitcher.com. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. Are you ready, team? Uh huh. Andy? Yeah! Bert? Well, all right, fellas. You're listening to CFRN, the Christian Financial Radio Network. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Over 85,000 titles. Choose from mystery, romance, religion, science, technology, business, New York Times bestsellers, even children's books. You name it, Audible has it. With 85,000 titles to choose from, you're sure to find the perfect audiobook for yourself or to give as a gift, and it's absolutely free. Just point your browser to audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. That's audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. And become a part of the audiobook revolution by downloading your free audiobook today. audibletrial.com forward slash CFRN. Hey, trader, want to get rich quick? Well, good luck with that. If, on the other hand, you actually want to learn how to trade, the place to be is www.cfrn.net. Tune in Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern, for our daily devotional, and then spend the next three hours learning how it's done from professional traders who actually trade for a living. That's www.cfrn.net. Every trading day from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. CFRN, a community of believers who trade for a living. Good afternoon, traders, and welcome back to the CFRN E-Mini Futures Cast. This is the daily broadcast of Indeterminate Length, where we discuss all things E-Mini, along with some really big ideas on the finer points of trading gold, bonds, crude, sugar, the euro, and even T-bills. Joining us today from our studios in Boston, Mr. Michael Borg. From our trading desk in Chicago, Mr. Burton Schlichter. Now, to get things started, let's go to our host and founder in Studio A, overlooking South Mountain, America's largest city park. Here's Dwayne. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. Today's Friday. Third day of April, 2020. We'll open today with a word of prayer. Philippians 4, 6 says, Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Join me in a word of prayer. Father, we lift up to you right now our concern for people who are more likely than others to become severely ill from this virus. The elderly, people with chronic health conditions. Father, we pray that you would protect them from harm, that you would be their comfort in this time of uncertainty. And for many, uh, the isolation from their loved ones that they have to endure. And as more people get sick, we pray for the healthcare workers. We pray for the first responders. These people are on the front line, God. They're working longer hours with fewer supplies. 
and they have a much greater risk of contracting this virus themselves. I pray that you would renew their energy, help them to get through these long shifts. We pray, God, that you would bring your protection upon them as they work with patience, multiply their supplies so they have the protective items needed to stay safe themselves while on the job helping others. I pray, God, that you would inspire and invigorate the research doctors who are developing better tests to diagnose this thing, creating vaccines to prevent it, identifying protocols to eliminate the spread. God, we just seek your wisdom daily. I pray, God, that you be with people making decisions that affect the lives and futures of our families, our communities, countries, the entire world. We pray that there be clear communication, truthful communication with each other and with the public. And we pray, God, that truth and empathy be the touchstones of people setting policies for our protection. And as our families adjust to everyone being home, as businesses and schools close, we ask that you guide people in their new realities. Give spouses grace for each other. Help worn out parents to speak words of kindness and encouragement to their children. Help the children find creative ways to experience the beauty of all you have created and continue learning. We thank you for your faithfulness and how you have guided and equipped people in their jobs and have provided in the past. God, it's so scary right now for so many, not knowing how bills and obligations will be met or even being able to provide for our families. As people feel financial strain during the uncertainty, God, we pray that you bring comfort and peace, reminding them that you're there. We pray that you would provide for all of us in this time of need. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, I have a screen up if you can't see it. Uh, go to our homepage at cfrn.net. On the right-hand side, click the big microphone, follow the instructions. You'll be registered in about 30 seconds, and that'll give you one-click access to the show each and every day. Now, on the days that you're out of the office or away from your desktop, not to worry, point any internet-connected browser to cfrn.net slash live there you'll find a live real-time simulcast of the show as it unfolds you'll also find a streaming live during the show on youtube facebook and twitter now of all the options you have available to you the one where you go to our home page and click the big microphone that one gives you access to the chat box so if you have questions about anything we discuss, anything we cover, that's where you want to go so that you can participate in the discussion. I'm just not able to monitor all of the chat boxes at the same time. So again, if you have questions, you want to be a part of the discussion, go to our homepage, cfrn.net. You'll see that big microphone on the right-hand side. Just click it, follow the instructions, 30 seconds, you're in like Flynn. Okay, let's take a look uh, at a chart real quick. Let's jump to, let's look at crude. Crude finally got a move on. We've been waiting a number of days uh, for these windows of opportunity uh, to come into play. And we've been waiting for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, eight trading sessions, and then and this is a daily chart. So yesterday, 
we managed to pop up now this this wick here at one point it was a just a big green daily candle but going into the close we we did pull back but as you can see we did service this first window of opportunity the second window haven't quite got there yet and there's a reason price has run into this green line which we refer to as the BBC that simply means bull bear cross when price is below that green line on any market any time frame we are bearish for that time frame and by bearish I simply mean that we anticipate lower prices once price closes above this BBC and holds it on a pullback then the narrative changes because then we become bullish for the time frame being observed as we anticipate higher prices now I'd have to scroll back a little here we go I'd scroll a ways back to find price above the BBC okay we're back way back into December here the bearish cross January 16th We've not had a bullish cross since. We had an attempt right here. We closed above. Then the market handed us this little doji, which represents a decision. Two sessions later, we find ourselves back below the BBC. And we've been below it ever since. We turned up. We've run into what we expect to be good resistance until proven otherwise the high probability move at this point will be for price to give us a down session a red candle a couple of red candles perhaps and as we run into blue and climbing and there's a the technical name is CFRNMA1. Okay, I just call it red and falling and blue and climbing. Okay, red and falling represents resistance, blue and climbing, support. Red and falling is bearish, blue and climbing is bullish. Now do we have to go back and test these lows no not at all based on news uh the president was having an important discussion today with the shale producers here in the u.s and i don't know if that meeting has happened yet or not but they say that will have a great impact on what we see happen here with the price of crude now it was uh yesterday i believe that we had that uh announcement president met uh, Russia Saudi Arabia and we saw crude run up five dollars a barrel in about I think when Michael measured this morning it was about two minutes now a five dollar move in the price of crude that translates into a five thousand dollar profit or loss per contract just depends upon which side of the trade you're on okay all right let's look real quick at a daily S&P chart our bearish cross for the S&P back on February 27th took us to a low of 21.74 and that happened on March 23rd we climbed back to the BBC okay. just like what you just just like what you saw on crude a second ago that same thing happened with the S&P when price hit the BBC that led to lower prices remember we expect it to be good resistance until it isn't at the 38% Fibonacci retracement buyers came in they drove the market back up to the BBC sellers stepped in took us back down to blue and climbing so we've now spent well this would be 
Well, we touched it on Wednesday. Here's Thursday. Today's Friday. Now, if we close the session today below blue and climbing, and then Sunday night, if there's no good news that comes out over the weekend, in the absence of any good news over the weekend, we open lower Sunday night. Blue and climbing is going to turn into red and falling, just like it did up here. See that? Okay, that's what it's going to look like down there. If we get some good news, or perhaps the meeting that the president's having today, if he hasn't already had it, uh, that could reverse this candle. That could send us back to the BBC. But if it does, then we still expect it to be good resistance until we can close above it and open above it. Okay? All right. Let me give you the numbers from around the world. These are the cash markets, as they call them, or the indices. Then we'll go to Michael and get a recap of what happened in the live training room this morning. After that, I'll do a recap of the concierge trade alerts for the week, the Logic 247 alerts for the week, and of course, we'll have answers for any questions that you have. All you got to do is put them in the chat box. I do see a question uh, that came in from uh, James about alert 3432, if I could go over that, I'll be happy to do that, uh, James. <clears throat> Thank you for the question. And again, anyone who has a question about anything, all you got to do is put it in the chat box. Nobody's here to judge you, so don't, don't be shy that, well, they'll think I'm not too smart if I don't already know the answer to this. Now, that's, we don't think that way, okay? We're here to help. We're all on the same team, okay? All right, starting here in the U.S., currently the Dow is down 465 points. The NASDAQ is down 143 points. S&P 500 is down 52. And the Russell 2000 is down 32. For the Dow, that's a drop of over 2%. For the NASDAQ, it's a drop of almost 2%. The S&P 500 a little over 2%, and the Russell 2000 down 3%. In the commodity basket, crude oil up today at $1.39, trading $26.71 last, and a $1.39 cent move in crude, that's a 5% jump. Just tells you how low crude prices have fallen. Gold up $5.50, trading $16.43.20 last. In the Asian markets at the close, Nikkei posted a gain of one and a half points. Shanghai lost 16, and the Hang Seng dropped 43. No movers, no shakers there, pretty quiet. And in the European markets at the close, FTSE down 64, that's a drop of 1%. The DAX dropped 45, the CAC dropped 66. And for the CAC, that's a loss of 1.5%. That gives us a green day in Asia uh, because of that 1.5 points. Uh, right, it's a mixed day in Asia because of the 1.5 uh, point gain in the Nikkei. And it's a red day in Europe, and it's a big red radio Friday here in the U.S. of A. So with that, let's get over to Michael and get a recap of everything that happened this morning. Okay. And when I come back, we'll address your questions, we'll talk to John, and we'll recap the alerts and the bigger time frames. And that question in the chat box, Michael, I'm sure you'll take care of that. Yeah. Um, hang on a sec. What am I trying to do? Here we go. Here it is. Uh, the good thought for the day. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking that created them. And that's an anonymous quote that I found. So, But I agree. 
it kind of lines up with the other thing uh, that I stumbled across the other day. Uh, whatever brought you here will not get you there. Think about that, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you my interpretation of that when I come back. Whatever brought you here will not get you there. It's all yours. Okay. Um, you should be looking at my yep. screen. Lock the door. Mm-hmm. Okay, Joe, let me just answer your question right quick. No, they don't have to be the same color. As a matter, matter of fact, oftentimes they're not. Um, you know, if it's... I'll show you, okay, rather than explain it to you, I'll show you, and then I'll explain it to you while I, while I show you. But I'll do that once I get started here. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, the third day of April, 2020. 2020. Third day of April. Okay. So if you have not taken a free trial, go to the homepage at CFRN.net, and right over here in the right-hand column, it says five-day free trial, apply it at CFRN.net. You can click on that. Or down here, it says free five-day trial, no credit card required. You can click on that. Either one of them are going to bring you to this page right here, where all we ask for is your name, your email, and your phone number. And you can tell us the biggest trading challenge so we can tailor one-on-one training just for you. Okay? Um, hit the send button, and you'll be sent a confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link. All right? If you don't click the confirmation link, we don't know that you took free trial. So you got to do that. Okay, and this is the spreadsheet. Now, the spreadsheet goes back over seven years. Um, it's got the daily results from what we did in the room, not what we, not what was available. I mean, there's a bunch more that was available, but, you know, as you'll see in a few minutes here, I end up missing a whole bunch of trades. Um, okay. Okay. Mm. As I said, if you're going to read the spreadsheet, you can read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today is the third day of April 2020. Um, today we made six ticks in Europe, in the euro, uh, 12 ticks in crude, 22 ticks in gold, and 12 ticks on the ES. Put us at 527.50 on the morning session. Today it took 24 minutes and three trades to get to the goal for the day. And at that point, we're up $100 contract, and we took a total of 11 trades. On the month now, we're up $1,821. That's over three days, averaging $607 per day. On the year, we're at $23,795. That's over 61 days, averaging $390 per contract per two-hour day. And I miss most of the trades. So we should be able to do better than that. Okay. Now let's take a look here at gold. We had a couple of nice trades on gold. Um, we missed a bunch of nice trades on gold. But here, let me scroll back. Here we go. Right here was um, our first trade on gold. We picked up 10 ticks. Then our second trade was right here. We picked up another 10. Our third trade was right here. And I didn't account for that one. <laughs> it looks like. But we picked up... Somewhere along the way here, we, right here, we picked up two ticks. Um, you see all these ellipses? Those were all missed trades because I was doing a bunch of things this morning. Um, there was a trade opportunity here. would have been a break-even. Trade opportunity here would have been profitable. Another one right here would have been profitable. Um, here, profitable. Then I did take that one. Uh, this short would have been profitable. Profitable, break even. Um, profitable, profitable. We did take a break even here, and um, that would have been profitable. Now, gold was it was pretty active today. It gave a lot of opportunity. Um, you now, if you look at it on a larger time frame, I like the fifteen minute. But you can see it came down and it hit the BBC right here. And now it's moving back up toward the high of the day. That's where I suspect it's going to go. Okay. That's my opinion on gold. Um, the euro. What do we do with the euro today? Just a couple of trades. Yeah. Uh, we had a break-even trade right here. We missed this one. Then we had a break-even there. Then we picked up six ticks on that one. 
Um, missed this long trade. That was a nice long trade. I'm sorry, I missed that one. This would have been a break even trade right here. And during the break, it looks like there was just one short trade right here. Okay. So the euros, you no, know, it was tradable today. Anyway, we'll say that about it. Now, crude oil. Let me scroll all the way back here. Um, here we go. The first trade on crude would have been right here. It would have been a break-even trade that we filled. The next one was right here. I ended up getting a break-even, but it did give us some profit. Um, there was a trade there that would have been profitable. Not there. Um, not there. And we picked up 12 ticks on this trade right here. And then there was a follow-up trade right here. And another follow-up trade right here. But um, I think I was talking about this one at the time. And a shorter opportunity there that would have been profitable. And there that would have been profitable. And here that would have been profitable. Um, here that would have been a break even. Here, you could have taken a little tiny bit on it. Um, then we get into the break. Okay, and let's see. During the break, was there any really good obvious moves? Mm, not really. It's setting one up right now, but we don't have a good trend going. Okay, and the ES, the ES calmed down a little bit today. And the volume's a little a little higher, so it was it was good. Um, you go see there were a whole bunch of trades, but I only did a few of them. See, I missed that one and that one, and got a break even on that one. I'm going backwards here. <laughs> missed that one, which would have been profitable. Got a break even on that one, which could have been okay. Got plus twelve on this one. And see if I keep scrolling backwards. Missed one there, missed one there, missed one there. Break even. A little bit of profit and a little bit of profit. Um, it was a shorting opportunity. It would have actually been from right here. Okay, you had to suffer through a little bit of a pullback. And it would have given some profit. Then there was another one right here for this leg down. Um, and a break even right there. Now, right in here. Let's see what we had going on. And there was a, a long opportunity from right here. But it might have been going into the high of the day. Um, and that was it for the ES. Okay. So there was a lot of opportunity on all the markets. Every market had a bunch of opportunity. Joe, to respond to your question, um, here's an example right here. I'm not sure what that question is referring to, Dwayne. I don't. I don't remember exactly what my my words were. What did I say? Okay. Anyway, right here, Joe. You see, you have a blue candle and a red candle. Like that. Okay. And you no, know, usually, you know, you could draw a trend line here, with these two red candles right here, or these two red candles right here. Um, but a lot of times it's going to be something like this. You know, if you have a wick on the bottom, then that's going to change things. 
And something's happening right now because the market's moving all over. Um, and Dwayne, I want to answer your question, but I'm not sure what it's in reference to. I said trade the most. Oh, what do I trade the most? Okay. Frequently. Yeah. Okay. What do I trade the most? I, I was adding words into the sentence. <laughs> it didn't make sense with the words that I added in. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll show you in the spreadsheet. Okay. Um, lately, the ES has been what I've been trading the most. Um, whereas usually it would be crude oil that I trade the most. Okay. Until all this market movement started, um, crude oil was my favorite market. I mean, it still is, but the ES is just given more opportunity than crude right now. You know, the ES used to be like my least favorite market because it didn't give any opportunity. That's right. The bar color doesn't matter. It's just bar location because, you know, you could have like this where there's no bar color right there. That's a doji. It's a gravestone doji. And then you have two red candles and the trend line is going to be the same right now. Okay. Um. But yeah, lately, ES, 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 ES. There was one day in the last two weeks that I didn't trade more on the ES. I think. No, nope, two days, three days. Today, I only had a, a few trades on the ES. Yesterday, I only had a couple. Well, a few. I had a break-even trade, too. Um, the day before that, I had five. The day before that, I had five. The day before that, I had eight. The day before that, I had five. The day before that, I had six. The day before that, I had seven. The day before that, three. The day before that, five. The day before that, five. So, lately, it's been the ES, Dwayne. Oh no, not not you doing. Oh the other. Oh one. okay. <laughs> All right. I was I was sitting oh. here with my headphones on, just kind of staring out the window at America's largest city park, and uh, I heard my name. So, okay. All right. Cool. Okay. No, I was just answering the questions. That's all. Um, but I am going to say this again. Go through the spreadsheet one more time. All right. If you're going to read the spreadsheet, you could read all the CFTC risk disclosures down at the bottom. Today is the fourth day, I mean the third day of April. That four being there, four three is throwing me off. Um, third day of April, 2020, um, we made six ticks in the euro, 12 ticks in crude, 22 ticks in gold, and 12 ticks on the ES. Put us at 575, I mean 520, I keep inserting things. 527 um, on the morning session. And today it took 24 minutes and three trades to get to the goal for the day. At that point, we're up $100 a contract, and we took a total of 11 trades. On the month now, we're at $1,821 per contract. That's over three days, averaging $607 per contract per day. Now, that is one contract, two hours per day. As you can see, I missed most of the trades today. Um, on the year now, we're at $23,795. That's over 61 days, averaging $390 per day. Um, Hang on, I'll answer your question in a minute, Mike. Okay. If you have not taken a free trial with us and you want to take a free trial with us, go to the homepage at CFRN.net. In the right-hand column, it says five-day free trial. Apply at CFRN.net. You can click on that or click down here, free five-day trial, or down here. Um, any of them are going to bring you to this page. On this page, all we ask for is your name, your email, 
Your phone number and details the biggest trading challenge so we can tailor one-on-one -on -one training just for you. Hit the send button and you'll be sent to confirmation link. You must click on the confirmation link, okay? If you don't click the confirmation link, we don't know that you took the free trial. Now, um, do I think this is a bottom on oil? Bottom. The bottom was down to 20 bucks. Um, but let's look at the daily chart. Can you see the bottom was down here at 1918. I think we're coming up to a top on oil right now, honestly. I think I think probably what Mike was asking was if you think that we have put the bottom in and that we'll just, you know, kind of see higher prices from here as we attempt to recover or as crude attempts to recover. I, I don't know if that if that was what you meant, Mike, but uh, well, we do what, have what a is, gap. If, if, if phrasing it that way, what do you think? You think you think we're going to go back to test the lows? I think we're going to go down. Well, we're still gonna... below the daily BBC. Is that what you got up right now? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I, I was just talking about that, and you know, we've got to close above it, open above it, and that's still no guarantee. But that's that's the earliest point at which I would start to consider going long crude. Yeah. Now, if you were going to change now, the that's price. From a, that's from a daily perspective. Uh, I'm sure right. that in the alerts, we've had, you know, uh, a 30-minute uh, logic and concierge trade alerts. I mean, those, we've had some of those trigger long. In fact, I'll go over them here in a, in a little bit. But a uh, bigger picture. Yeah, it's going to take some work to get through there on the daily chart. And what, what price was that at again? Well, here, I got my chart. I can just look at it. Yeah, well, we can pass it back out to Fabulous Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, Studio are, you at, that, are you at that point? America's largest city. Yeah. yeah, I was just answering the questions. Right. Um, Alex, I was 2.30 this afternoon. I'll have to send him an email. Okay, I can see your chart. Okay. All right. So, yeah, here's just my daily chart of crude. Same thing you were looking at on Michael's. Just the scaling might be a little different. I use green candles. He uses blue. But still just a daily chart. So we got to get through there. And the high probability thing is for price to come back down to find blue and climbing and go back up to resistance and bounce around a little bit. And then we'll get a winner. Either we'll break above, close above, and open above, or we'll get below blue and climbing. And the same thing, close below it, then open below it, <clears throat> and we'll have a few days back down to potentially test the lows, if that's the way it unfolds. So, we don't know. We just trade, we just trade what's in front of us. So the recap of the recap. Uh, today, it took 24 minutes and three trades to reach $100 per contract. That's a good thing. Yes. All right, guys. Uh, what did I do? The chart's back. Let's go to the 30 minute. And there it is. Let's take a look at... There was a question from James. And the question was on alert 3432. What did the second T mean? And, and it's just the second trigger. Uh, so the entry 2472, first target 2470, second target 2465, and then the final trade two target on a short will always be the weekly trading zone below. On a long, the final trade two target will always be the weekly trading zone above. So that's how that works. Okay. Uh, if you would like a copy of last night's concierge trade alerts, I'm going to drag them up to the screen so you can grab a shot. Okay. 
So on the S&P last night, consider being long 2607. 2607. Is that supposed to be 2507? It was. Okay. Somebody brought it to my attention in the Telegram channel and I didn't have a chance to check. So, yeah, hopefully you guys figured that one out. Um, I won't bother marking up the chart because I obviously made a 100 point typo there. The short side, 2478, that part came out right. Now they came out last night at 11.45 p.m. Eastern. Sorry, I've been late a couple days this week. Uh, and it's two late days back to back. But 11.45, let's find that on the chart. No, it's going to be this one. 23, the 23.30 candle. It's 11.30 to midnight. And the number is 24.78. And 2478. And there we go. 2478. But we put in a swing low that took us down to 74 and a quarter. So from 78 to 74 and a quarter, I guess that's three and three quarter points. Important prices, important areas, almost always tested. So as the market moves higher, it runs into the BBC. And when we approach it from below, we expect it to be good resistance until it isn't. And that's it price back down. This time we only dropped to 76 and a quarter. That's like one and three quarter points right there. Uh, John's in the room. If you okay. All right, and then on this one, on the third trigger, so you had one nice trigger, one trigger that just didn't go very far. This one dropped to 2460. So that's an, that was an 18 point move there. So, okay, uh, so did you say John's here? John, welcome to the show. I seem to have lost audio. Michael? John? Can you guys in the uh, chat box hear me? Anybody? Okay, thank you, John. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, guys. Well, I don't know. Michael dropped off the map. And let me... There you are. All right, welcome to the show. <laughs> How are you? You feeling better? Uh, not as good as yesterday, but I'm okay. Thanks, right. thanks for asking. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a hard thing to shake off this thing. So, uh, but I, I am kind of still optimistic in spite of uh, <laughs> things are getting worse, rapidly worse. I'll tell you why I'm optimistic. <clears throat> the the recoveries are accelerating as I as I. I, you know, pointed mm -hmm. out about a week right. ago, mm -hmm. uh, likely. Uh, they're going up at about 20,000 a day. I actually think there's a lot of countries haven't reported recoveries yet. I wouldn't be surprised if they're already at 300,000. We're about 220, 221 at the moment. Here's, here's the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, what I'm about to tell you is going to blow your mind. Okay. <laughs> because uh, it's so tragic. If the Chinese, instead of bashing or, you know, the world leaders who are accusing them of, you know, underreporting the right. numbers. You're right. The tragedy of it all is, <clears throat> if they would only come clean and really tell us the full story, uh, you know what the recoveries would be like today? It would be about 1.2 million, or maybe even 2.2 million recoveries. That's the that's the thing. How do you how do you, how do you how do you come up with that number? Well. Uh, if there were two million infections in China, uh -huh. maybe two, three million, right. most of those people have recovered. Uh, well, what about? Uh, I don't think you and I have talked about this missing cell phone thing. 
What do you, what do you well, that's, that's, that? that is, you know, the 21 million cell uh -huh. phones. Right. Uh -huh. Well, that's the worst case scenario, obviously, you know, that, that, and it could be, it could be as bad as that, you know, it really could be. What other explanation? Uh, yeah, what, or maybe, maybe the phones got turned off because they couldn't pay their bill. Well, that's a, that's a point. Yeah. Yeah. And and the government over there, I, you know, to be is, perfect, I, I don't think you could keep information like that out. Of, you know, yeah, I, I think the real number is, and, and listen, it's not just. I had it from, from some pretty reliable sources. <clears throat> I had a friend of mine who was in China for for most of this quarter, most yeah. of the last quarter, and he just got back like a, a like a, about a month ago, and he told me seventy five thousand dead. Uh, but that was, you know, I really think the number is about a hundred thousand dead. So do you and think that cell phone thing? Do you think that's uh, do you think that's a like a conspiracy theory, or or maybe it's as simple probably, as they probably, couldn't pay their uh, bill and so probably, they got yeah. shut off? And, and look, you know, look, you, listen, it's a massive country and it's a small percentage of people can't pay their bills. Or whatever, it's a, you know, it's 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 reasonable. But here's the interesting thing: look, we're at uh, a million, you know, just over a million infections right now, fifty thousand dead. So if China did get to 2 million infections and 100,000 dead. I mean, it's kind of a reasonable number. And hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully it's going to turn. It's already turning. But uh, if 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 we go to as bad as that, that may be that may be the worst case scenario for the rest of the world. It might be a lot more. Remember, we're talking about 5 billion people rather than 1.4. But, uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, it, it certainly sort of fits the picture. So if, um, you know, and you probably would be looking at about 1.5 million or, or more recover, recovers now if, that, uh, if that's the case. So, I mean, that would, be, that would put a t totally different psychological, uh, you know, uh, what's the word, kind of impression on people. Yeah, well, like people would be able to reconcile that, yeah. <laughs> I, I, found a, I found a plausible reason here. Uh, that this uh, Bloomberg offers this, as well, someone who writes for them, part of the drop in all these cell phone users could be caused by migrant workers who often have one subscription for where they work and another for their home region. And so they've mm -hmm. canceled their work region account after the virus prevented them from returning to work after the Lunar New Year holidays that began in late January. Now that's mm -hmm. an analyst at Sanford Bernstein you know that's that that's plausible. I mean, we're talking about a a country with what do they have a billion and a half people? Is that is that the population of China? Well, look, you, you know, other, during there was probably no safety <laughs> for China. Remember, I mean, you know, they're, exactly they're not... where carriers here are being lenient with people and and all kinds of <clears throat> things are happening. That's not necessarily happening in China. Yeah, yeah. So it's entirely plausible. So <clears throat> um, listen. Uh, I think I mentioned yesterday, I recommended like GILD yesterday morning, ABT, Abbott. Yeah, we did talk MRNA. about that yesterday. I did, and, and MRNA, and they're all acting incredibly well. Royal Gold has just made a new high, post-recovery high. Uh, the, 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 the J Nug and the Nugs aren't doing so well, uh, but uh, J, Royal Gold, I, I, I think it's resumed its leadership of the gold sector <clears throat> we're struggling a bit here but i i'm kind of got the feeling that between now and maybe monday or tuesday we could be getting getting up towards 1700 again on the gold maybe up to 15 on the silver possibly even higher mm -hmm. <clears throat> um i also mentioned i know i think uh, and i actually bought some yesterday uh, near the lows it's um one of the few stocks going up today, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, but it's not out of the woods by any means. But what I was noticing about it is, look, I actually think it's a potential takeover target. And I also think it's, if it announces the start of trials, which could happen at any time, that could really move move this stock up. And I think I mentioned it to you and Rich and a few other people that I've spoke, spoken to or listeners. Uh, so uh, the but I was noticing this morning, I mean, look, it had a huge run up to 19 and came down. And so it's got a lot of overhead to get up through. But what's interesting about it is I noticed that, uh, the pre, you know, and we were looking at this with the FTSB and some of these others, you know, they kind of had a first run up and then they pull back 
and it was just as hard to buy it back then as it is kind of right you know or was yesterday or today <clears throat> but i noticed that even though there was a lot of kind of red red candles and things you know it just blew through those when it when it had its run up and uh, i and i think that it, you know as long as we close near the highs today or preferably higher you know if we get up to eight or nine I mean, if we got up to nine, we'd kind of reverse a weekly, a down week. Which one are you talking about now? Uh, I know. I know. Okay. Yeah. There we are. Yeah, that's had a that move looks a lot of a little extended. Uh, <clears throat> maybe a yeah, back I mean, to order. If we, if we if we have a late move and we get back up towards nine today, I think this uh, this this thing could really uh, begin to look quite. Uh, positive and could potentially gap through 10 next week so uh, that would be a very big deal if that happens yeah, so there's just a little resistance right take, there take a look at uh, mrna a right there yeah uh, yeah take, take a look at mrna during this so. oh, if you could put up the daily on that for a minute just just to, just to do. oh you know i didn't even realize i had it on a 30 minute here hmm. yeah i mean look yeah, you see what I now mean? getting back to nine by the end of the session it, I, I was looking at the chart and i was like yeah i don't know but now i can see that it's it, it would be simple yeah. from the big so picture. look at look at the previous see how we had a, a previous run-up and then we had all these red candles and everything and you see how it just blew through those right so we're, we're looking at a kind of a kind of a larger version of that right now but we're sort of basing at a higher level which is kind of constructive and uh yeah, and potentially yeah, you're right you know, it's good observation. Sudden, sudden, you know if suddenly you know we just started going up strongly uh, it could really could really go places so uh, uh listen uh, somebody i don't know i don't have any interest in this stock or but uh, uh, somebody told me about a little company called bivi today i haven't i haven't investigated them yet but i'm sorry uh, what is it again bivi B, no, B I B I B I. Sorry. B like boy. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. No, v, sorry, V I V I B I V I B V. Okay, all right. There we go. Now we got it. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, you know this. There's a kind of an interesting fellow behind this company. It's really apparently. thinly traded, huh? Yeah, yeah, it is. But just keep look. It's like that Digi. Remember, I mentioned Digi a while back, and you know it was kind of thinly traded down near a dollar and next uh -huh. thing you know yeah. it blasted off to a dollar 90 i mean i had no idea that was going to happen but it just did happen so uh it, 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 it looked kind of interesting so i'm, I'm not saying to buy the stock or anything i'm just saying to, to, to just have a look at it and do your own due, due diligence so as, as is the case in all I, I, I don't give buy and sell recommendations all i do is alert people to tra trend changes that's all i'm interested in so, so this is bio uh bio v there's a there's a very kind of so, uh, flamboyant, flamboyant character as a ceo oh, oh really okay so, well that sounds yeah, interesting so, yeah yeah so you know he's one of these guys who's they, they, I, I learned a new word today he's the zelig of wall street i didn't even know what called zelig existed what, is, it's a, what does it, it mean? means kind of a guy who's <laughs> ubiquitous a fellow who kind of pops up everywhere and is and is always in the limelight so uh, oh oh boy that's this should be this should be very interesting so yeah. do we know if why, there's why any don't real google, why don't you google the zelig of wall street you can't kind of do, see do we know up. if any of any of this uh <laughs> Like you just said, you haven't you haven't verified any of it. So I'm just wondering if there's any real science here, or if it's just some. No, no. I think they're taking some using... kind of treatment and and re 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 kind of packaging it or something. So you you know you never know. Could so be. so you think there is an actual business there? Okay. Oh yeah 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 okay. definitely yeah. All right. So the Zelig of Wall Street. Let's take a look. There he is. That's the guy. You know you're somebody when you have a Wikipedia page. <laughs> Dub the Zelig of Wall Street is an international financier and chairman of the LA-based investment company Acutus Group Holdings. Um, over the years, he's held various senior executive positions, worked for Goldman Sachs, 
And he's a Wharton school as well. He probably knows Trump. You know? mm. <laughs> he made a name for himself mm. back in 1983. He was occasionally referred to as the Michael Milken of the East Coast as he provided Drexel Burnham Lambert clients with an alternative to the Milken controlled high yield bond market. So, uh, yeah, okay, well, we'll keep an eye on this. What okay. else you want to take a look at? You know, look, uh, you can't rule out uh, an engineered rally this afternoon. It's right. sort of like half of the course when you get bad news. My uh, Mnuchin doesn't like uh, the market going down too much anymore, I don't think. And uh, <clears throat> they may pull out some kind of uh, late rally to prevent a really big downturn next week, which unfortunately might be on the cards if they don't stop this you know, new decline that started yeah. this week. Right. Uh, they got their work cut out for them, obviously, but um, the, you know, you've seen some crazy things happen, so I wouldn't rule anything out. And, and look, we're not down 400 on the NASDAQ. We're not down like, uh, you know, a thousand on the Dow or two thousand or anything like that. We're we're down a reasonable amount uh, that could be reversed. There's <coughs> so. the Dow. <coughs> so, but, yeah, it's you not, know, unfortunately, not so bad. I have to say, you know, it does look like we're going to probably go lower still on this Dow and then right. not maybe you know, yeah. the test the test the lowest, you know. So, because here's what we're 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 still we got this little battle going on here on the daily chart. Yeah. Between the BBC that, and the uh, I mean, that's not that and... daily. I mean, look, Dwayne, if if this thing uh, turns up from here, I mean, you, as a matter of and fact, it could. You get it absolutely, it could. We, we talked about this before. You, listen, if the if the A wave was the, was uh, the last three days from last week, right? If the A, that's the A wave, <clears throat> and then we have a B wave, and then we have a C wave up to about twenty eight hundred. Um, you know, we could still go down after that, possibly. So. Uh, or or that's it and we're going up and we're not going down again you know neither either case is possible so <clears throat> because you know the one thing that uh, sticks in my mind and we went over it yesterday is i mean that tvix like you know going to a thousand was really really um you know uh, sort of like 87 and you know it was a an extreme of, of biblical proportions, you know, it was like a, one of the most monumental extremes ever. <clears throat> and um, the, you know, while you can't rule out the VIX going back up to the, maybe 500 or 600 or something like that, it, you know, I'm, I'm not sure we're going to go past, past 1,000 again. It's a, uh, but because uh, that was really, really, really an extreme thing happening. So, uh, I mean, I must admit that VIX looks like it's going to take another leg up uh, looking at it right now. Mm, it looks uh, kind of heavy to me. I don't know. Um, no, well, you see that spike and then the pullback, you know, it could still, right? yeah. still have a pop up to 60 maybe. Uh, but um, the, the it's worth mentioning this, you know, 87, uh, we, we had, remember, just like the Tuesday last week, when we had the record update, had a record update on the Tuesday of 87, then we had a retest on the Thursday or Friday, another another bounce. And we kind of went sideways for three months after that. It never really went much lower. Uh, it kind of really was in a trend for three months. And then in 1988, the market started going up. And, um, and uh, you know, that was the end of it. Uh, and we should take a look at the transports, Dwayne, because uh, maybe, uh, obviously, the transports is, uh, you know, really uh, kind of uh, devastating the uh, low. But I think the transports are would also be a clue if the transport starts going up. Here's a daily. Yeah, that that would you know, if transports were, were to start rallying, that would be an encouraging sign that uh, that the worst might be over. So I definitely keep a very John, good keep eye on going. That. I'll be I'll be right back soon. I get my door. <laughs> Just keep going. I'll be right back. Okay, okay. Well, we are we are getting you know actually right now uh, we're we're potentially positioned for a rally as we as right about here. So um, uh, the 
the uh, good chance that will happen. And um, however, whether whether the rally can be sustained or whether this is just a fake out, and remember it could be a fake out, so be careful. Uh, the 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 um, you know we'll have to see. But if we see some sustained buying come in, maybe they're going to get the better of this. So. And and look, you know, we we've seen the market rally on bad news a few times this last week, so uh, uh, you know, don't rule it out. Uh, uh, INO actually picking up a little bit here, looking quite good. Just had a pullback, so potentially can continue higher. Uh, definitely, if this thing accelerates higher later today, I'd be. Uh, be kind of uh, impressed. So um, the, uh, the oh, by the way, the Spanish, the Spanish Spain, um, you know, maybe they're doing a better job of reporting their recoveries, but uh, they've got a pretty phenomenal recovery rate going on, in spite of the fact that things are pretty pretty desperate over there. I think about a third. I mean, listen, they haven't been in this thing for much for very long. They're up to about a hundred thousand or so, and uh, they, I think they got about thirty, thirty thousand recoveries, maybe more, thirty or forty thousand. That's a pretty, pretty incredible number, actually. Um, and I mean, the UK is half of that, right? And they, they, I mean, there's no uh, uh, either they're not reporting the recoveries, or there's no recoveries to speak of in the UK yet. And I have to, I have to think that's very much not the case. Uh, it's got to be at least 10, 20, 30,000 recovered in the UK by now, I think. So, uh, crazy thing is, you know, Luxembourg, don't know whether you've ever been there, but it's right in the middle of Europe. You know, it's like the, the epicenter of Europe in a way. Uh, and of course, it's joining Germany and France and various countries. And it's apparently got the highest infection rate per capita. Which which uh, place is this? Lux Luxembourg. 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 Hmm. Yeah. So uh, and it's a very high, you know, they've got the highest, one of one of the highest uh, per capita incomes in the world as well. So maybe the maybe the rich aren't taking this thing as seriously as other people. Who knows? But anyway, it's it's kind of a it's kind of an unusual so thing. Uh, they probably got pretty good health care there, or or do they? I would say so. Yeah. Or, yeah. or do they have the option for private health care? They have to use the government. I don't like know. Canada. Don't know about that. Don't know about that. Yeah, calling it the epicenter. See that? <laughs> Where it show me. Let's just go go up to the top again. Life at the center of the curve of the. Oh. Uh, <coughs> this is in Forbes. Okay. Despite the epidemic sweeping through Europe, spring has arrived. It's been almost four weeks since Luxembourg, among the first countries in Europe, locked itself down. All schools have been closed. But these ads, I'm telling you, they're just so intrusive. They went away. We got the internet, and there was ads everywhere, and then they seemed like they, they went away for a while. But now they've come back so aggressively. Uh, so I'm not seeing any statistics or numbers. Uh, 1,500 tests a day. They have 626,000 population, about the size of Rhode Island. 30,000 deaths officially released in Europe. Another 141 people were diagnosed with the disease in the last 24 hours. Well, I mean, that's in part because more and more people are getting tested mm -hmm. faster. So we should expect to see that number grow uh, in part for that reason, along with, of course, I guess this thing, you know, going to continue to spread. Uh, there's hope that when summer comes along, that will have some impact on it. Yeah. You know, Duane, uh, <clears throat> there's a few things in the pipeline. Uh, there's some kind of a serum test or something that can actually tell you whether you got infected. 
before. You know, that, that will be awesome if that if they if that comes up because they'll really start to get a handle on who actually has had this thing and got over it and all that kind of you know that 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 that, that would be a big deal as 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 is the the five minute test or the ten minute test you know as well. So. Um, yeah, you know, I, I was thinking this morning, somebody far smarter than me uh, should develop some kind of goggles, some kind of glasses. You can just look at somebody and because, I mean, this is this is a thing. We can't see it, but it lives on surfaces. I mean, if it can live on a surface and then, you know, get it onto my hands and ultimately get into my nose. I mean, you know the kind of we're. I'm not talking about like night vision goggles, but I guess something along those lines, something that, that sees that light spectrum. Because that thing exists, uh, like I said, we can't see it with the naked eye, but it's uh -huh. there. If somebody would uh -huh. just, in, somebody smarter than me would invent a, you know, like an Elon Musk. I'm uh -huh. sure he's working on something, but. Yeah. Can, you, can you bring up uh, Twitter? Yeah, please? sure. <coughs> So this was the transports on the daily. There's Twitter. <clears throat> okay, see that doji yesterday? Right here. Yep. Okay. Uh, that was kind of potentially a retest of the lows recently. And uh, Goldman Sachs came up with an upgrade on Twitter today, or a buy. Sold off, but it's starting to uh, give a buy signal here. So, uh, you know, potentially if we do go back up to 24 or higher today, that would be the possible beginning of a, of a rebound in Twitter. Yeah, it got, the, it uh, got about 70 cents higher on the open. Yeah. But uh, check out SPS, SVXY. <coughs> and it came back, look at that, it came back to, look at the wick, <coughs> fill the gap yeah. almost yeah. perfectly there. Yeah. Which one? S, SVXY. SV. There we go. Okay, this is actually quite interesting. Uh, this is the opposite of the, um, you know, the the VIX, the TBIX, if you like, but it's a it's a sort of a subdued version of it. It's not as dynamic. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it's interesting that uh, it's holding this range, kind of what I was just saying about the market basing out. And you can this and this is actually up on the day, so it's uh, you know we're down on the day in the Nasdaq, we're up on the day in this, we're down on everything, and we're up on the day in that. You know how do you explain it? <laughs> the, um, it's a kind of a leading indicator. Yeah. Do you need to get that? Yes, he does. All right, guys. Go back to the thirty minute here. Okay. So. On the long side, there was a typo, so we won't even talk about that. <clears throat> Short side, we had one, two, three triggers. Uh, those two, nice profitable moves. This one, yeah, just didn't go anywhere. Now, what did price do? Price came down to the important price, important area. And even though it produced a profitable trade, it, the market really found support here, which sent it up to the BBC where it found resistance and resistance sent it back down to support back up to resistance back down to support and you see how it just gets pinched up right in here when this happens the market's going to make a move in one direction or the other unless you get into a megaphone pattern which is that's when you have let's not even go into it hopefully we won't have one for a while because uh, they're just difficult to trade. So price gets on the north side of the BBC. See over here we did, we closed above, we closed above, but well, I think you can see we never, we never pulled away, we never, we never moved. And <clears throat> you had this dynamic in place right here. See where the bearish cross happened? At a price of twenty four ninety eight, if you follow the horizontal line across, where the bullish and bearish cross take place on the thirty minute and smaller time frames to a lesser degree, 
that's a great spot to look for resistance because price got below the VBC over here but the bearish cross that makes it official that confirms that the market really is trying to go lower and when price can travel this far and pull red and falling down the way it did let me rephrase that indicators don't move price price moves indicators okay all the indicator does is it visually highlights what's happening so it makes it easier for you to create your narrative of what the market's doing like i just talked you through so as price tries to break through resistance there's that aspect the second is is this some people might call that hidden resistance or something I, well it's it's not hidden to you anymore because i just told you about it so over here when we take out these highs right because when the market starts to move higher here we don't know that it's not going to just turn into more of this in fact that's the high probability thing until it isn't so as price takes out these highs and this looks like a pretty powerful momentum move it happened at 7 30 eastern this morning and why did we why did we stop here resistance 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 now the question I guess would then become well why do we stop here no real obvious reason or obstacle this area of resistance here is below that support and resistance can show up at any time anywhere now sometimes we get complacent watching price trade from what we've identified as support to the area we expect to be resistance back to support back to resistance back to support it's a, just another reason to always have a hard stop in place because you don't know when support or resistance will just show up out of nowhere and if you don't have a stop in place that could be very expensive On the Dow last night the alert was uh, long above 21190 211.90 There we go. Two eleven ninety took us up to twenty one three thirty one. It's about a five hundred dollar per contract move. Important prices, important areas, almost always tested. So we take out these highs. Market gives us a nice trade. We come back to the BBC, which we expect to be good support. Gives us another trigger time the moves up to uh, 263 that's about another 70 point move $350 per contract <coughs> actually it extended it it did go up to you know touch these highs That's you, John? Yeah, yes, it is. Yeah, actually, uh, that uh, SVXY just gave me a kind of a short term sell here, even though it rallied up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So, okay. um, <clears throat> and, and remember, it's the opposite of the VIXs. So, if the VIXs rallied this afternoon, it's kind of like 
yeah, forget about it. <laughs> we're, we're probably going to go lower. So, uh, but, but it's kind of interesting keeping an eye on that thing. And the fact that it's actually up today when everything else is down you know, tells you something. So, uh, you, you, called the, it, um, you called it kind of a, a leading indicator. What, what characteristic is it about it that uh, well, actually, during during the last uh, well, because it's it's you know if the that thing bottomed out the day that the TBIX topped out, right? I actually wanted to ask you: Could you put up uh, SQQQ SQQQ right mm -hmm. now? Yeah, you see that's up as well, and and the Nasdaq's down. Uh, which what sort of volume of, and participation sorry, sorry, do these no, things no, have? That's correct. No, 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 sorry, that's correct. That is, that's, that's up. Uh, put up the T, the T Q Q Q. Sorry, T Q Q. What kind of what kind of volume do these things trade daily? Uh, I think that they're heavy heavy trading volume. Are they? Okay, that's the bad news. What's going on there? That the, that so, what that's telling me is that the Nasdaq uh, has gone is is actually uh, weaker right now than the um than the um than the the other one we just looked at the svxy and it's also gapped down which is really really bad and uh, potentially means worse is come worse is coming unless unless we have a late rally today so uh, you know that's kind of a, a, a scary development frankly so okay. Anything else you want to look at? No, listen, I uh, hope everybody has a great weekend. and uh, Take care of yourself. Listen, hope you feel better. Yeah, you too and uh, everybody uh, everybody else. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, so we look, just looked at the long side on the Dow. Okay, and if you, if you traded this alert, questions always, well, how do I know when to take profit? Well, Looking left will give you a, just a world of information. Uh, you learn a lot. Look, when you cross the street, you got to look both ways. Trading, look left. Always be aware of price, but you get the idea. So we trigger, nice trade, back below the trigger, another nice trade, back below the trigger, another nice trade. So three on the long side, the short side. 20925. Has anyone, since you've been on lockdown, watched any good movies? Movies that maybe fell through the cracks, weren't big in the theater, but you thought were good? So I might just use some I might actually take Saturday and Sunday off and watch a movie or something okay I have the uh, got Netflix and the uh, Prime so if you have any suggestions put them in the chat box 20805 those of you who have I think it's Prime I'm not sure it's called Black Monday it's a series uh, there's adult language, so, but it's a really interesting, it's a, it's an entire, I don't know if they're going to do a season two or not, they did a season one, and, and again, it is, there's adult situations, rough language, but because it's about Wall Street, I, I wanted to watch it, and, uh, well, <laughs> you've never seen Wall Street presented quite that way, but we check it out. Okay, so on the down... Two zero nine two five down to two zero eight zero five. So that's a little over a hundred points. That's five hundred dollars per contract traded. Just getting the bearish cross here, so high probability thing now. And the reason price stopped there. And of course, well, yeah, but price went way down there. It did. But it was quickly rejected. So don't put as much stock in that 
as I do in this. And this kind of shows you here, okay? So what, what now? Well, I think we go back above the trigger. We got a weekly zone right here. We got the BBC right there. Market doesn't seem to be on fire to go anywhere at the moment. So I would look for the Dow to move up, up to sideways. The BBC drops to the zone and then we get a down leg into the close. All right, the NQ, last night's alert for the NQ, consider being long 76.04. Looks like we made it up to about 44. So that's 40 NQ points, $20 a point. That's $800 per contract traded. On this one, well, how do you know when to get out? Well, again, look left, look left, previous swing high. Plus you've got this weekly trading zone right overhead. So none of those are gonna give you an exact number to get out at. So you have to manage the trade. And as you pull up into this area, you know, you tighten up your stop, tighten it up, tighten it up until the inevitable happens. But by doing it that way, see, you're not going to give back that many points doing it this way, but you leave the door open because, you know, a spurt of buying could come in and just push it right up to the zone. So if in a situation like this, I'm pretty sure the market's, you know, going to find resistance and pull back. So you get your stop just maybe two ticks behind it. So you're willing to give up two ticks for what, if a surge of buying came in, a breakout, it could turn into a couple hundred you know okay all right uh and the russell did well as did crude as did gold uh, it's been it's been a really good week let me show you logic 247 for the week stand by here we go this week week 87 as of one o'clock today, we issued 48 alerts. That's more alerts than we've had in the last couple, three weeks. I mean, I think we've been like between 30 and 40 for about two or three weeks because of the crazy volatility in the market. And now this, this number right here tells me things are getting closer to normal than further away. Uh, my wife and I went to Walmart yesterday and there was more stuff on the shelves than there was the last time we were there. So I don't know if these are green shoots of recovery, but I'll take it. 48 alerts, one never triggered, three still waiting. And I just, I just put some out uh, recently, and I don't even know if those are calculated in here. So I think we'll be over 50 for the week. We have 44 actionable. Four of those were stopped out. We don't want to risk more than $300 per contract per trade on any of the alerts, concierge or logic. If you have to risk more than $300 per contract per trade, you're better served to just wait for the next trigger because most of these will trigger multiple times as you just saw. And I was going one, two, three, right? wait for a, another trigger and using market structure you won't have to risk as much okay and we can breeze through those real quick and if you have any questions uh dan says ozark new season just started you know I got lost around the, I think the end of season one. How many seasons has there been now of Ozark? That was a very, that was an interesting storyline. And then uh, Dan also says, if you like outdoors, a series called Meat Eaters. Huh. Okay. I'll check that out. So this week,
week 87. Last week, week 86, we had 30 actionable alerts, three never triggered. 4% of actionable alerts were stomped out. That was an abnormal week. Uh, we averaged about 20%. So this week, week 87, we start Sunday night, 6 p.m. Eastern. So if by chance you came in late on the trial, you'll have to check with Valerie. I, she handles all of that. But if you want to be with us Sunday night at the Globex Open, that's when we start, Sunday night, 6 p.m. Eastern. You know, everyone who's not in the futures world thinks of Wall Street opening or you know trading hours the market it's, it's a nine uh, it's a 930 to 4 gig but with futures it's a different world markets open Sunday night 6 p.m. Eastern and stay open until Friday afternoon at 5 p.m. there's an hour break each day from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern but other than that it's pretty seamless so we start when the market opens because these alerts are posted, you know, when opportunity presents itself. So you might get an alert at 2 a.m. You might get one at 2 p.m. Time isn't the factor. Opportun the opportunity that's available, that's what, that's what matters. So when you get to see a thumbs up, that just means price got to the target. Uh, when you see a red X that was one that got stopped out. So there's the S&P and the Dow, the NQ. This is crude. This was all Sunday night. S&P, NQ, the Dow, S&P. Now we're getting into Monday, right? Yeah, the 30th. So there's a couple stop outs back to back. S&P, crude, gold. That was an NQ that got stopped out. S&P, so now we're in on the 31st. Those are ones, if you're on the trial, you have access to look at all of these alerts. Hopefully you've been, hopefully you've been you know, trading them in SIM all week. That's, that's the goal of a trial. Put the indicators on, go to class in the morning for two hours, learn from Michael. The alerts come through, whether they're the concierge or the logic, that we're looking at the logic right now, whichever one it is, treat it in sound. Don't trade real money. You don't trade any methodology or strategy with real money until you first become consistently profitable. Otherwise, you just throw your money away. And Nobody wants to do that. So, again, it's been a great week. Uh, let's go to our good word for the day. Because I know we have one. Oh, let's see. Dan says, on Prime, you would love Mr. Rogers. You know, when I close down this session that stuff on the screen is going to disappear so i'm going to jot them down real quick note to myself ozark meteors that sounds cannibalistic mr rogers series zzz -Z -Z. And homecoming. I think we've watched homecoming. Wow, <laughs> it just popped up on my news app. Uh, Bill Withers, who wrote the songs Lean On Me and Lovely Day, has passed at 81.
So, we've got a lot of sick people in the world. Exodus 15, 26 says, I am the Lord who heals you. Now, we're told to believe God for our healing, which leads us all at some point in our life, and just you know, might as well admit it. We, we wonder why isn't every sick person healed? I mean, if they're a believer, or according to the word, if I'm a believer, pray over them, lay hands on them, it says they shall recover. So at some point in our Christian walk, we ask ourself or God, why isn't everybody healed? We know the doubt, we know that can, that and unbelief can hinder the ability of God to work miracles in our life. You know, so you've got to have faith. You've got to believe. When Jesus returned to his hometown, to those who knew him best, in Matthew 13, 58, it says, he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. But there are aspects of healing that we will never fully understand. Second Timothy Paul wrote, I left Trophimus sick in Miletus. <laughs> that sounds like two diseases. I left Troph, sorry for anybody that lives in Trophimus or Miletus. Why would Paul, who raised the dead, leave a friend sick instead of praying and seeing him healed? Well, there's many things about God that we don't know. But there's one thing we do know. His word says, I am the Lord who heals you. And since he said, I'm the Lord and I do not change, in Malachi 3.6, and Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. We can go to him for healing based on his word. One of the last statements Jesus made before leaving earth was this. Mark 16. These signs will follow those who believe. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So, do you believe or not? Maybe you believe in God, but do you believe that God still heals people today? There are some denominations, we don't need to call names, but some of my best friends No, Right, you know, there's, there's Groups of people who love God, believe that Jesus was the Son of God, raised from the dead, all of that. But they also believe that after, after what happened with the disciples, he turned, he turned it off. But now he said, he says, I got I to gotta get out of here so that I can send you the Holy Spirit. The purpose of carrying on the work of the disciples. And that, that's why he came to earth to, to die for mankind. To rise again. And to teach these twelve. And out of those twelve. Well. Jesus is the only man that ever split time. B.C. and A.D. Before Christ and after his death. So do you believe that God still heals today? If you do, then this scripture is for you. James 5.14 Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, 
anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. So the good word for you today is don't give up. Believe God for your healing. That's our good word for the day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Whoever you are, wherever you are, may God continue to richly bless you with his mercy and with his grace. I'll see you at the bell. Sunday night, 6 p.m. Remember this, there is no greater return on investment than to see a human life changed and given hope. As always, pray hard and trade safe. Any financial information discussed on this show is simply the opinion of our host, Dwayne Reeves, his co-hosts and guests. To learn more about trading e-mini futures or to take a one-week free trial in our live trading room, call 1-866-928-3310. 866-928-3310. Information discussed on this radio program should not be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell any security. Always do your own due diligence and consult with a licensed securities broker or financial planner before making any investment decisions.